Okay, so we're actually in uh, Photoshop CS3, and we're just looking at a photo that we're going to make some improvements on. Um, so one of the things that I really like to focus on in uh, digital photography whenever I'm doing portraits um, is the teeth. Uh, nobody likes to have yellow teeth, um, and nobody likes to have um, you know facial blemishes or anything else, but teeth are, are a very important thing. So um, one thing that I like to do is always just make teeth a little bit wider. Even if they're like a little, even if they are, appear to be white, um, I always like to just bump that up just a little bit more just to kind of like improve it. Um, this particular photo has a very warm glow to it. Um, overall, the skin, it has some very warm skin tones. Um, and it was actually shot during the day. So you have a lot of warm light um, basically casting over these two boys. So that, that warm light also projects onto the teeth, which happen to be white. So um, they're going to pick up a lot of that warmth and then appear to be kind of semi-yellow. So I like to kind of get rid of that yellowishy tint that appears on teeth, especially during the times when you're shooting outside. So, um, you know, again, like he's a little, you know, he's pretty young and he's got some like missing teeth here and it makes it really cute. So. I really like that part of the photo, so I'm not going to really mess with his mouth at all. Um, you know, if this was an adult, if, it, if he was 40 years old and he had missing teeth, then I might try to Photoshop some teeth in there to help him out, but he's okay right now. He's pretty cute the way he is. So we're going to actually look at, at his teeth here, and we're going to actually just improve the color of the teeth just a little bit. We don't want to make it look unreal, but the way you do this is and generally when I'm making selections, unless it's just like a really loose selection, but we're going in with more detail, so I'm going to select the pen tool. And the pen tool really um, is really great for selecting details because you can actually use it. Um, and I'm going to show you how to use it in just a second to actually turn this into a selection. So the first thing we need to do is actually select the entire teeth. So what we're going to do is we're going to start over on this far edge, and I'm going to start with my first point. And I generally try to go for the areas where um, it, there actually already is a point. So like where his gum line comes right down to the tooth, I'm going to select that. Now what I'm going to do is between these two points, I'm gonna actually going to select right in the middle. The, the pen tool automatically recognizes that as being a, a line, and it's going to give me the option of adding a, um, another a point along that path. So what I'm going to do is that plus button is already there, so I'm just going to click that and holding down my control key will actually allow me to drag that path to any shape that I want so that I can actually conform it to the area that I want. So again, we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to click right in that little gap right at the very point of his gum line and then clicking right back into the center line and then holding the control key while I'm clicking and dragging and moving that point right up to the top there. Now, if this doesn't fit exactly right, you can always hold your shift key, I'm sorry, your control key, and also move these points as well. So use your control key to basically move these points around. Again, I'm on a, on a PC, so these are not the Mac instructions, um, but I believe you would just hold the, um, on the Mac, you could hold your, your Apple key as well and get the same type of effect. So um, basically what you're going to do is click again, um, on this particular one, just because we have kind of a jagged line, I'm going to actually kind of do this a little at a time. So I'm going to do this section, then I'm going to go ahead and do this section under his lip. And if you want to, we can also move this around as well if we need to, and kind of bend that around. And then back to the center again, and just checking, see where the teeth are at. I'm going to go up here can actually do a double one. Since this line is so long, if you notice I bring this point up here, well now this section doesn't exactly fit. So what I could do, just make another point by clicking on that and then basically holding my, sh my uh, control key and then dragging that down. So we're just going to finish the rest of the path doing the same exact thing. Just holding the control key to change the shape of the path tool. And we're just going to quickly select the rest of the teeth. And I'm not worried too much about his back tooth because it's kind of shadowed anyway. I just want to mainly grab these ones. And then for the most part, these are mostly straight lines. I'm not going to worry about that little gap right there. 
if you want you can do a little bit at a time you don't have to use your control key if you don't like to um, I generally do because you can get a lot of really nice uh, curved organic type of lines and really flow with most of the things on your photographs so we're basically just going to flow those lines right around the teeth and then just to finish off we're going to go right around that last bottom one I'm going to just make a couple lines there and to close the path you just have to simply click in the same um, point that you started with so I'm going to click right in that hole you can see it just closed the path so then coming back over here we're going to actually look at our um, different palettes here and what you want to do is you want to click on your paths palette okay um, the, the palettes of these are a little bit different in CS3 compared to CS2. Um, if you can't find your Paths palette, uh, just simply go up here to Window and find Paths in the list. And if this is not checked, then it's not showing. So make sure that this is checked and you should be able to find your Paths. So we have this palette open right here and the work uh, path is already selected. We're going to come down here right to the center one and if you notice when I roll over this it's actually going to say load path as selection this is the one that we want so what that's going to do is actually convert when I click that you can now see that the path is now this dancing line and that just is our selection so that means that we select exactly what we want a lot of times when I'm making selections and this is a really detailed area so it probably won't matter as much but typically what I like to do is actually um, add a little bit of a, um, a softening effect to the actual selection and there's a couple ways to actually do this you can actually do it um, during the time that you're making a selection um, or you can just come up here to your selection area here and um, you can do modify feather and feather what that's going to do is actually soften that just a little bit so I'm going to do feather and we're just going to basically take this where it says feather selection and I'm just going to put it at 1 um, I believe you can also if you do 0.5 you can also do um, it in very small increments I think 0.5 might be the smallest one though so we're going to leave it at that for right now it just adds a very s subtle subtle effect to that so now that we have the area selected we've done our soften the last thing that we need to do is actually take this yellowishy tint out of the teeth and the way we do that is by basically going up to our image up in the top um, part of our uh, menu and going uh, to adjustments and we're going to do hue and saturation you probably could do some of these other effects but this is probably the quickest way um, hue and saturation and as you can see we have some different options here um, uh, we have the hue we have the saturation and we have the lightness so in this particular one, all we're really going to change, just so you can see this, um, and make sure that you have your pre preview button on, because otherwise you won't be able to see it, is we're going to actually take out the saturation just a little bit. Okay? And you can kind of see the effect happening in real time. Okay? So I'm going to make it a little bit extreme, just so you can kind of see exactly what's going on here. So if I undo the preview, you can see the teeth go from kind of like this yellowishy, kind of orangey color, to then black and white now the black and white is a little bit extreme it looks a little bit fake um, especially you know with the gums and everything else it literally makes his teeth look like they're made out of porcelain or something and we really don't want that effect it doesn't look very real and it's not very appealing um, and so we're just going to actually make this a very subtle effect we're just going to take it down just enough that that yellow tint kind of goes away and I would say about 30 percent is just enough to do that without kind of going overboard you could even do it a little bit less if you wanted to um, around like 25 um, that would be probably fine too uh, just to be on the safe side let's just do 25 for now and actually go ahead and hit OK so now you can see the, the yellowishy kind of tint that was there before is, is now has gone away so just zooming back out we'll see and on my keyboard well, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control D and that's going to take the selection away. And now you can see his teeth are a little bit more white, a little bit more vibrant, and um, you know, again, it's nothing that looks too phony, doesn't look too fake, but at least um, we've we've taken that yellowish color out of 
his teeth. So that's how you fix teeth in a photograph. You take out the yellow. And uh, thanks for joining this tutorial.